It's 11.15 a.m. This is Observer Radio News. Good morning. I'm Natasha Ali. It's 7 degrees and sunny outside our East York studios. And in the news today, witnesses are asked to contact police in the mugging of a 79-year-old man on the subway. Suspects in the murder of Caitlin Sampson are sent to trial. And we're bringing your NHL playoffs recap in two minutes. Our top story. Police are asking witnesses to step forward after a 79-year-old man was mugged on the Bloor Danforth subway line. Yusuf Hizzle spoke to City TV last night and said his cries for help were ignored by other passengers on the train, even as he tried to reach for the passenger assist alarm. The Toronto Star reports Hizzle was traveling eastbound at about 8.30 p.m. Saturday night. Two men attacked him and took his wallet after he refused to give spare change. TTC spokesperson Brad Ross said that passengers shouldn't be afraid to activate the yellow emergency alarm that's available on all TTC transit. The Globe and Mail also reports that Toronto police plan to release video footage from the mugging, and both suspects are believed to be in their 20s. Two suspects in the murder of seven-year-old Caitlin Sampson were sent to trial yesterday. Donna Irving and Warren Johnson are charged with first-degree murder. Public outrage followed Caitlin's death in August 2008 when she was discovered with clear signs of trauma. According to the CBC, veteran officers described her injuries as some of the worst they had ever seen. Irving, then Caitlin's legal guardian, and her partner Johnson are due in court May 19. Toronto residents are facing yet another garbage disposal problem as three recycling plants in the GTA shut down operations. The latest closure is at a glass recycling plant in Brampton. The Star reports Toronto sends out over 1,200 tons of broken glass every month, and all that waste will now have to be trucked out to recyclers as far west as London, Ontario. This comes after Canada's only dedicated polystyrene foam recycler closed last month. A third plant in Whitby also shut down recently due to high operating costs. And now to sports. In your Tuesday morning recap, the Montreal Canadiens sink Washington 4-1 in NHL Eastern Conference playoffs. Yaroslav Halak served a remarkable 53 goals against the Capitals in Washington last night. The star says the Habs have a lot to be proud of, but Toronto's got a bit in celebrating as well. Mike Camilleri of Richmond Hill scored two goals. That means the Habs are going into Game 7 on Wednesday at 7 Eastern. The Chicago Blackhawks win 5-3 over the Nashville Predators, and Chicago now advances to the Western Conference semifinals. The Boston Bruins had a 4-3 victory over the Buffalo Sabres, and their first playoff win since 1999. Ryan Miller performed 28 saves for Buffalo, but that wasn't enough as Thomas Vanek scored for Boston with just a minute in the final period. In baseball, the Jays played a four-hour game against the Boston Red Sox, losing 13-12 at the Rogers Center. The star reports Jose Batista and Lyle Overbase scored home runs for the Jays, but that wasn't enough to beat the Red Sox as they scored four runs in the sixth inning. In entertainment, this week the spotlight's on the world of mixed martial arts with a DVD release of a Canadian movie called Unrivaled. Although it's far from being Oscar or even genie-worthy, Unrivaled gives audiences an inside look into the highly competitive sport of MMA. The Star reports the movie was filmed in Hamilton and directed by Toronto-based filmmaker Warren Sonoda. Dare to Dream. That's the motto at Toronto's Famous People Players, a production company that hires the developmentally challenged to work on stage and behind the scenes. They use black light, bright color, and life-size puppets to tell stories of inspiration. In this company, the players are given the chance to overcome their limitations. Thanks to founder Diane Dupuis, who struggled with her own adversity as a child, but she pulled through by never giving up on her dreams. Now until the end of April, you can see her and her story of inspiration on stage in a famous People Players production called Hi Ho Silver. Dupuis says she encourages her People Players to look beyond their limitations, just like she did. She says that players joined the company unable to spell their name, tie their shoes, or speak in public. But they learn to overcome these obstacles by never giving up on themselves, and that's her dream come true. 
That's Observer Radio News for Tuesday morning. For more, check out our website at torontoobserver.ca. I'm Natasha Ali. Thanks for listening and have a great day.